So what I've got here is a very simple uh, jig. It simply rides on the fence of the table saw, and it's basically just a uh, basically a taller fence. It has a uh, essentially a little box set up that that hugs the uh, the fence, and it slides back and forth. It's very simple. This is uh, one of those jigs that I made for one project with the intent of building a nicer version of it uh, on down the road, and I just never did get around to it. Uh, so it's definitely on the to-do list, and uh, when we do build one, we'll definitely do a, a video on it. But the premise is very simple. It simply holds our leg, or our stretcher in this case, at 90 degrees to the table, straight up and down. I've got it clamped here, and all we're going to do is make a pass, and that's just going to remove this piece of wood. Uh, we flip it, you know, uh, in for end there, make a second cut, and it's going to expose uh, our tenon. So it's pretty simple in premise, and uh, let me show you how it works. So the jig works pretty good. You can see that we came out exactly to uh, our initial first cut that here that we made with the sled. They met up uh, quite nicely. Now alternatively, if you didn't have this set up at all, you could cut these on the bandsaw. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do uh, to make this last cut here. Very simple, set up a fence, run it straight through, and we'll finally have our full tenon. Over at the bandsaw, I've got the fence set to the right width, and I've also got a stop block installed. So it's just a matter of running it through, flipping it over, and doing it again. So here's our fully formed tenon, and let's see how we did. Right on the money. Okay, so let's move on to the mortises. After very carefully laying out uh, where the mortises need to be, I've decided that I'm going to chisel these by hand as opposed to using a half inch router bit. Uh, I really want to make sure that this, the fit on this is very, very snug. I don't want any gaps, uh, especially on the face side, showing because again this is a through tenon. So I'd rather not take any chances on using a router bit this time and I'm just going to very slowly uh, finesse the fit until it comes out just perfect. So uh, we'll set the camera up and uh, we're going to use the same techniques as before, across the grain, with the grain remove a little sliver, and then uh, just keep working our way down. So once you get this uh, initial shoulder established, you can come back in now with a hammer and, uh, and start driving it in. Of course you want to put the flat side to the back with the bevel facing in. Get it lined up on that shoulder. And to start with, you just want to do a few small taps.
Come over to the long grain section, do the same. And more or less repeat the process over and over, removing little pieces every time and just going deeper and deeper. And of course I'm gonna work from uh, both sides um, until I meet in the middle. And then from that point, that's when you can really start finessing the, uh, the fit of it. And uh, I've got uh, both legs marked, uh, this side being out right here. So of course that's the side we wanna pay the most attention to. So I'm gonna start with the inside first and uh, basically like I said, just keep doing this process over and over until uh, we meet in the middle. So after a lot of chiseling, we finally got uh, the stretcher put in place where it needs to be. Uh, the underside, of course, came out pretty well. Uh, the backside here, you can see the through tenon, and uh, definitely not gonna lie, that's a lot of work to do, but it's, uh, it's absolutely the look I was going for. Now, originally what I was gonna do was basically do kind of a four-way chamfer, just chamfer all four edges. But now that I get to looking at it, I think what I wanna do is kind of come up with a upward arc like this, it definitely kind of follows the uh, the Asian feel that I have going on with this bench. So I'm gonna disassemble it and uh, we're gonna knock these out and then we're gonna start working on all the other curves for the rest of the components. So for my curve here, I just used a, a French curve set, found me a gentle little arc that I liked, laid it out. We're gonna rough it out on the bandsaw and then take it over to the drum sander and finish it up. <laughs> So I'm ready to lay out my arcs. Uh, if I was building a production line of these, I would certainly make a template, use the router table, and that way you can batch them out. Being that this is a one-time thing, uh, it's just not worth the time to go ahead and do it. So I um, built me up a little jig here. I uh, just got uh, two blocks of wood that I put a saw kerf in. I've got a flexible ruler in here. Uh, it's of course bent to the proper curve that I want. And I've just got some layout marks here that tell me uh, where it needs to stop and start. So, I'm just gonna trace out my curve here. And the bottom curve is a little bit bigger than the top curve. So I'm gonna have to reset this up, mark out the top one, and then we'll go to the bandsaw and then finally over to the uh, drum sander again and get it all cleaned up. You know, the drum center does a really good job of getting it close to the line, but uh, a cabinet scraper and then a flexible sanding strip such as this one here is what's really gonna finesse the curve and get it down uh, exactly where we want without having any bumps or ridges in it. So, kind of a long process, but it's one of those things that just has to be done. Now you probably can't see it too well uh, on this wood, but I went ahead and I've laid out the curves on the bench top as well. And I used the exact same techniques using a flexible ruler, uh, my clamp blocks, and just matched up my layout points until I got the right arc, simply drawing it on there. Now we're gonna cut it out on the bandsaw, but there's one exception. Let's take a minute and look back at the SketchUp design, and what I want you to notice is the top has a flare coming out of it.
Now that flare, according to SketchUp, is 11.2 degrees. Uh, no need to get that precise. 11 degrees is, is perfectly fine with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that out on the bandsaw with the table tip to 11 degrees. Also, the ends are going to be cut at that same 11 degrees. For that, though, we're going to do it over at the miter box while the piece is still square. Well, it's back to my least favorite activity. Lots of scraping and more sanding. Okay guys, so as you can see, the bench is coming along. Uh, the majority of the woodworking is now done. All the mortise and tenons are done. The, uh, the shaping of the edges is done. You know, we still have a lot to go as far as uh, finesse work though. A lot of fine sanding to do. We still got champ for all the edges. But of course that's gonna wait to, uh, pretty much till the very end to do all that. But we've got to the point now that I've really been looking for this whole time, and that's to do some inlay work. Um, let me show you a quick little picture of the inlay that I have in mind to put on this bench. So as you can see, of course, it's a hummingbird. Uh, my mom was a huge hummingbird fanatic. She, uh, she had a big curio case full of figurines and uh, snow globes and everything you can think of. Uh, in fact, she even had a hummingbird tattoo on her shoulder. So I thought how fitting um, to put a hummingbird right here on this bench and that way it'll always be next to her. So uh, that's the project. Um, so of course we're going to tear the bench back down, we're going to take it apart, take it back over the workbench and we'll get started on doing some inlay. Now I've got the pattern taped in place and the first thing I want to do before I, I touch anything is I wanted to make some little hash marks on here and that's so um, after I trace this if ever I have to realign this template again to retrace something I'll have some indicator marks to let me know exactly where it's placed. Um, these lines don't have to be put in any certain place and in fact the more random the better that ensures that it's going to line up only one way. So with the tape down um, I've got some graphite paper here and you can just pick this up at uh, Michaels or pretty much any craft store and I'm just going to trace it out and I'm going to use a pen for this instead of a pencil uh, simply because a pen, especially a ballpoint, is going to roll much more smoothly on here and hopefully give me a, a much cleaner pattern and uh, it, you know it's not going to have a tendency to try and dig into the paper there. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with that detail but uh, when we come back we'll have this traced and we'll move on to actually cutting some wood. So using the same uh, pattern as we did to make the hummingbird itself We've transferred our lines again using the graphite paper over to this piece of stock now, which is going to be our head. So with it drawn out, we're going to go over to the scroll saw, cut it out, and then we're going to first sand it before we ever start cutting on our uh, seat here to then fit it. 